Praise the Lord. Welcome to Ain. Guys, I just want to sit here and have a little chat. Let you guys take in the sights and the sounds of the mini farm. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you and inspire you. We're here in Ghana. We moved from the U.S. to Ghana the end of September 2022. And we have been diligently working to cultivate our lives here, cultivate our 50-acre farm. We've gotten 26 acres and the borders done. So we're still working on that. We have made a lot of changes and improvements around here, a lot of repairs um, to the infrastructure of our four plots here. We have um, built our mini farm on our one plot. We've brought in a lot of animals, 300 chickens. We have set up our garden. PC Girl helped us to get it to where it's at today. Um, yeah, we have done a lot here at the house. And we've done a lot at the 50 acre farm. We have a desire to encourage you. We have a desire to inspire you. Um, my husband is from Ghana and had wanted to move back eventually. I think most Ghanaians that I've talked to that's their plan eventually to move back. Um, yeah, a lot of times they wait for their children to grow up and get on their own and get out. But by that time, how old are you going to be? Are you going to be able to, you know, have a place to come to? Are you going to be able to build yourself? We don't have a huge house. We have a three bedroom. It's not a story building. Um, we have a three bedroom. The children will be out. They'll be doing their own thing. So who's going to clean the story building and all the rooms and bedrooms? Who's going to keep all that clean all the time? Going up and down the steps and all of that when you're getting older. You know, those kinds of things aren't necessary, in my opinion. You know, how about getting yourself, securing yourself some land, some legitimate land. Put you a wall around it. And then, little by little, begin to build a small house. Leave yourself some space. If you want to build a story building later or your children want to come and build a story building, they can do that. But for now, get yourself a place that you can come to. Get yourself a place you can come and, and call your own. It doesn't have to be huge. Start small and begin to plan your exit. You know, think back to when you first went to the diaspora. What was your goal? To make money and come back? What was your goal? You know, and look at where you are now. What's your goal now? What is the purpose? You know, what are you trying to do? You don't want to wait until you're 60 or 70 and come here and start building businesses and things of that nature. It's best to do it when you're younger. Um, you know, push now. Cut out a lot of the expenses that, you know, the advertisers make you think are necessary. And they're really not. We did that. We cut out a lot of stuff. When I came in 2018, we already had purchased 
um, two plots of land or three plots I'm sorry we already had purchased these three plots we didn't have that plot at the time we wanted it but they weren't selling at that particular time um, when I came we had the foundation here so I stood on this foundation and was looking out over there. The yellow house was not built at that time. Um, I was looking at the mountain, I was looking at the trees back here, this nice little forest area, and walked the perimeter, prayed over it, and, you know, we stayed at a hotel. Um, we stayed at a hotel, reasonably priced hotel, but it was very nice and comfortable. And, um, you know, we did all the sightseeing. My daughter and I came. My husband wanted us to experience it um, ourselves. So we came and did all the things. And I told my husband there's a lot of opportunity here. There's a lot of opportunity. And, you know, we decided that it'd be better for us to push hard and um, come, push hard and come as soon as we could so that we could start building our lives here. So that's what we did. We made our five-year plan, and we worked really hard. We didn't go out to eat anymore. Um, we didn't waste money on things that weren't necessary at the time. We worked very, very hard. My husband worked two jobs and overtime. I worked and overtime. We worked, 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 saved. We didn't eat out. We didn't eat lunch out. We didn't eat our buy things from the vending machines at break time. We didn't um, do those things. We didn't take vacation. We took, a, I think, one vacation we went. But for the most part, we didn't take vacation. We pumped all of our money here. We borrowed money in the beginning to be able to do some of this stuff. And then our five-year plan, we paid it back. And then we, um, you know, we're finished paying it back. And then as we were still working and taking care of things, um, shipping our things, getting our cars ready, shipping our cars, and all of that kind of stuff. We were preparing um, for our move. We were preparing for our life here, working hard, and guys, it felt like we got out just in the nick of time. That's what it felt like to me. Um, it was hard, but we pushed and pushed and pushed and now, here we are. Here we are. And we're building things here. It's not easy. We're pushing. But we, too, have um, put our hands in many things. So that's why it's been a little more strenuous for us. But we wanted to hurry up and get multiple streams of income coming in so that we all learned during COVID, you know, sometimes one business or another is not going to work very well during those times. Lots of people learned that when they had to close their businesses. And lots of people learned it when their businesses thrived, thrived in that time. So that's why we're diversifying. That's why we've gotten... You know, we've seen needs and, you know, 
tried to put our skills towards those needs. So I just want to encourage you. Are you from Ghana? Then what are you doing? What are you doing to make it back here? What are you doing? Do you have trusted people that can help you? If not, we're available. Um, do you have questions? Not sure about it? Are you afraid that if you don't build a giant mansion before you come back, people will say something? Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You have to worry about what you need and what you need to do. From what I've seen, retirement in the U.S. is where I can speak from. That's where I was born. Retirement there is not pretty. Retirement there is not pretty. Are you worried about the health care? They have top-notch health care here. Um, they, they do have some other health care here too, but they ha do have top-notch also. But what I can tell you is I have seen multiple, multiple, multiple testimonies on YouTube about people coming off of their medications when they came to Ghana. The food is different. The lifestyle is different. Um, the air is different. Everything is different. You know, some of you who are in the colder states, you know when it gets winter time, your joints hurt and everything. You don't experience that here. You know, there's a lot of benefits. When you don't experience that winter joint pain, you're not going to take as much medication, which is going to be better for your body. You see where I'm going with that. You can eat bad here too, but you don't have to. You can get fresh, local, organic things here that you know are organic and that will serve you well, will serve your body well. I'm just, I really, really, really have a desire to encourage you to come back home. You don't have to pack everything and come right now, but make a plan. Work towards the plan. Little by little, work towards the plan and get yourself out of the rat race. You don't want to work like you work over there until you're 70, 72 or even more. I know people who are in their mid-70s and still working full-time over there. When do you have time to breathe? When do you have time to get out and plant you a garden? When do you have time to take a walk in the fresh, clean air? When do you have time to decide what time you wake up, decide what time you go to bed, what time you eat, what time you sleep what time you can use the bathroom when do you when are you going to have time for that you can't when you're working for somebody else like we work in the u.s and even if you have your own business in the u.s it's not easy it's not easy it's very difficult for you to get ahead ghana has a better opportunity it's developing that means the opportunity is vast. The building going on here is incredible. Incredible. The road construction, the everything, everything. The, there are banks now that are willing to give loans to communities to build pharmacies, supermarkets, restaurants, whatever the community sees that they could need. They present it to the banks, and the banks are willing to give loans to be able to build those things. So what is it you would like to do? Do you want to do something small scale? We have 300 chickens back there that have begun to lay eggs. That's going to be an income for us. We're going to be selling the eggs. So what is it you can do? Come for a visit. Come for a visit, if nothing else.
plan your next visit and come with your eyes open and come and see what the opportunities are. I really, really want to encourage you, especially I can say my Ghanaian brothers and sisters because my husband is from Ghana. And please don't wait until your retirement age. Please. And my fellow, I'll speak to my fellow Americans, but those in the diaspora, that you see things aren't right where you are. You see that you're not being treated well. There is opportunity. There are people here. We're here. We have lawyers. We have, um, you know, everything done legally. Our business is registered. We're not hiding. We're not doing anything. We just really, really, really want to see you guys get out of the rat race. There is something to be said for getting out of the rat race. We have done it, and we have um, found things when we came that we would have done differently coming from where we come from. Um, you know, there's just different things they do different here. They're willing to do it how you want it. They're more than willing to do it how you want it, but... It's not normally how they do things here. So they need someone to tell them. You know, they need someone to tell them. They came with this uh, borehole here with the two things that come to get metal come together. They said, oh, we found water. They dug the borehole here. It wasn't enough. It barely gave any water. And we paid a lot of money for that. When we came, we realized it wasn't any water coming from there. And then we had to come back here, put the gate, do this. You guys will see a video on that at some point. It was a whole saga. But you don't have to go through that. If you need help, you need some eyes on your project, you can't afford to go back and forth, that was our thing. Either we go back and forth and let it take longer because it costs a lot of money to go back and forth. Or you have somebody trusted to have eyes on the ground for you. So that's what we're here for. We want to help. We want to help you. Not sure where to start. Not sure what you can do. Have you been away from Ghana for so long you don't know how it is here now? That was the case for my husband. He'd been away for three decades. He didn't know how things were. He didn't know how different things were, how developed they were getting, how, how much opportunity was here now. He didn't realize all that because he'd just been working, 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 taking care of his family, taking care of his family here. And, you know, he didn't come back and forth. So if you need eyes on the ground here, you see, we're doing the videos here. I have a drone. We have it, uh, the ability to video things. And we can send it to you. We can help you. What is it you want? I just want to encourage you. Begin the thought process. Don't put it off. Begin the thought process. Start writing things down. Get yourself a book and start writing ideas down. What would be your ideal life as you age? Start working towards it. Contact us, A-A-I-M-C-S dot com. That stands for AIM Complete Solutions. So we're here to help. Go to the website, check it out. Um, Go to the contact page, scroll all the way to the bottom and check out the map. You can make it big, small, see where we are compared to places you know. And let us know how we can help you. Let us know. 
If nothing else, I hope and pray this channel inspires you to start making moves. Don't stay in the rat race your whole life and then die. Don't do that. Don't do that. Live your best life. Start figuring out what that would be for you. It's going to be different for everybody. Not everybody wants a mini farm down here. Not everybody likes the garden. But you don't have to do it this big. You can put a few plants. A couple tomatoes, a couple peppers, a couple garden eggs, and get yourself some fresh produce you go and pick for when you're cooking. Um, and if you really don't even want to do that, there's plenty of markets with fresh produce around. And it's, it's not too expensive. And as far as the conveniences, if you're afraid to leave the conveniences, all the conveniences are here if you want them. There's plenty of um, supermarkets, ShopRite, Malcolm. There's others I haven't been to yet, but there's plenty of places around where you can get those. So I really want to inspire and encourage you to start making your plan and contact us if you need help. And I just really, really want to see you guys get out of the rat race. You know, we freed ourselves and now we want to help others become free too. You're free here. You're free. No working and um, making a paycheck and a third of your paycheck's gone before you ever even get it. You know, they have this tax, that tax, this insurance, that insurance, this one, that one. You don't have all that here. You don't have all that here. And remember, guys, insurance is just a business to make money. That's all it is. That's all it is. What if you had all the money you ever paid into insurance if you had that in your bank account? You would be set. If anything happened, you supply it yourself. But they take the money and skim off the top, and by the time it comes time to pay out, you don't get what you're supposed to. So, just want to show you the puppers are mostly sleeping. Grace, Wisdom, Subine. Peace found her a place on the front porch. But that's a beautiful sound, guys. Our poly tank is overflowing. That's a beautiful, beautiful sound. I'm going to come and turn the pump off. You guys stay tuned. It won't be too long. I'm waiting for a final detail um, to see if we get refunded for the uh, other pump the rest of the way before I'm going to do the whole video. I want to have all the pieces together and be able to tell you guys. So um, stay tuned for that video, our borehole saga. But yeah, this video is mostly to inspire those of you who are from, even if you're not from Ghana. I know some people are from different countries, but unfortunately, they don't feel comfortable building and moving to their home country. And that's really, really sad. But Ghana is a peaceful country and it'd be a good place to start good place to start so and if you're like me and you're from the US and you want to make that move you want to get out of that rat race you want to be treated like a person instead of a color this is the place for you there's been many testimonies of how people have talked about how they felt I'm sure you've seen them on YouTube if you're watching me you're watching other channels and all the testimonies are there you can see them all um, how people feel when they get off the plane guys don't be afraid 
We were told lies about Africa. Don't be afraid to come to Ghana. Ghana is welcoming, it's peaceful, and English is the main uh, language. It's not French or Arabic or anything, it's English. So you can, you can easily maneuver around. Okay, I'm going to leave you guys with that. This has been quite a long video. To my Ghanaian brothers and sisters, please come home. Ghana isn't Ghana without you. Please come home. Be a part of building the country to a great nation. Be a part of it. Enjoy the benefits of your homeland. Enjoy the smells, the sounds, the tastes the air, the people. Enjoy it. Come and enjoy it. Come and enjoy it. All right, I'm going to leave you guys with that. I hope you're inspired. I hope this got your, your mind thinking, your wheels turning. And please, start putting something down on paper. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover. Um, let me know in the comments if you've been inspired. Let me know if this touched you at all, if this um, motivates you to at least start thinking about it. It could be a 10-year plan. Don't overstress yourself. It doesn't have to be a 5-year plan, a 2-year plan, a 1-year plan. It could be a 10-year plan. But you got to get something in place and see what God will do with it. All right, guys, until next time, God bless you.